Currently working on a Holden Malibu. This is a 2.4 and it's a 2013 year. It's got the engine management light on and fault codes P0010 intake cam solenoid control circuit, P0011 intake cam position system performance, and P2089 intake cam position solenoid control circuit high. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a very quick and simple test you can do. And uh, I'm gonna show you what the fault that is and hopefully how we rectified it. Okay, so that's the fault codes there that is stored and a very simple test you can do on these go back out go into back again data display and we're looking at the actuator data now remember that was an intake so we have intake command percentage there so make sure it's getting the command and then we have intake angle percentage so we're just going to rev it we're going to check the command so rev See that spike we get? We'll go again. And we go down. And we see there's a flat line. So as you can see, you get a spike up through, go back up to the percentage command. You can see every time it's getting the command and we have a flat line. So as simple as that, we have a solenoid issue, uh, that time and variable valve time and solenoid. Um, you can do a resistance check across the solenoid. You can remove them and you can do a simple actuation test uh, or you can do the actuation test in place, but removing them, you can visually check them to see if there's activation there. Uh, but ultimately this is gonna need uh, that being replaced. Whether you replace one or two uh, is up to you. A lot of people like to do them in pairs. You can just replace the intake side, uh, but they are quite a common fault on this. And to confirm the fault 100%, I get my multimeter, I get some test leads, and I go directly across that actuator solenoid. This is on the exhaust, and you can see 12.8 ohms of resistance, so it's perfect within spec. This one, however, on the intake side, which is the one that's flagging the fault code, is showing 1.6 mega ohms. So a mega ohm is a million ohms of resistance. So clearly that one has failed and we have confirmed the fault. Always recommend clearing off any dirt or debris around any component that you're removing from an engine be it around a spark plug injector, in this case a solenoid. So when you pull it up out of position, no dirt or debris will fall into that hole. And when I get the intake side out here, we can see that that is quite sludged up. There's a lot of dirt around the tip of it. Can actually imply that the service interval may have been stretched too long at times on these. And we do have some sludge buildup on the top side of the engine. Now, another thing to note is these can be stuck in position. I've come across this a few times as well when doing them. And what I use is my pliers. I grip on the side of it rock it side to side and try and break that o-ring free first and foremost then after you have it free so where it actually rocks you get upward pressure so you pull upwards as you're shaking it side to side and eventually it will come out and you won't do any damage it'll be good to go this one as well is clogged up after I spoke to the customer, they decided they wanted to go for two. They did not want to come back later on with the other one failing. Haven't given the information that um, these do fail. I have replaced exhaust and intake sides on plenty of these holdings. The customer opted not to have to come back again and decide to get both done. Recommend oiling up the seals before you put them down. And then it's simply hand tools to tighten them down. It's a very straightforward procedure. Both removal and install and testing on these is quick, fast and easy. So no big deal all around. 
after I have all of this done, it's simply the checking. So I'm gonna jump onto the live data in a second and show you the results, and then I'll be on to my final road test. With the electrical connectors back installed and the fault codes cleared, I have the live data up here. And looking at the intake cam position angle, we can see on the waveform that it is changing in sync with the rest of them every time I press the throttle. So we had a flat line beforehand. We now have a response on the live data afterwards. So we have confirmed the repair. Last thing to do on this is bring her for a road test, confirm we have no issues, and this one will then be good to go. I've just done the final road test with this vehicle now. The intake and exhaust cam solenoids have been installed and they are now functioning as they should be on the intake side that reading that was uh, non-responsive as you can see in the live data here when i was um blipping the throttle we now had a response the resistance test is also a very good one to do on those um actuators to see what uh reading you have and you want a resistance i believe i think in the 5 to 15 range for those those were 12 uh, fresh out of the box they're around 12 um, to 12.5 or ohms approximately there was also sludge buildup that was very visible and um, that's to do with maintenance and service over a long period of time this got 281,000 K's so having good maintenance records will help those items build up a sludge can happen over time regardless but that is excessive amounts that was on that mesh strainer on those um, on those solenoids and that is it I'm just on my way back to the workshop now engine light is now off we're having the correct readings on the live data and this issue is now fixed we have exactly what we are looking for and we have found and fixed this problem I really hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching Oh! <laughs>